Welcome back to One Hit Wonderland Where we look at Artists Bands Who only got known For one song Yeah And their career Didn't last long But I tell them Okay, we're going back to 1998 here, back to the glory days of adult alternative. Yeah, that would have been right when I started really getting into music, and yes, adult alternative is exactly what I gravitated to. Did I buy more than one Goo Goo Dolls album? You bet I did. I never claimed to be a role model. But Sean Mullins was just a tiny bit before my time. Matter of fact, I don't remember hearing this song very much at all. By the time I started listening, it was all about Everlast and Sugar Ray. Sean Mullen's lullaby was one of those things I just missed, along with Jewel, Savage Garden, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone. Yes, truly, I was a deprived child. Don't weep for me, we all have our misfortunes in life. She still lives with her mom. But yeah, this one is an odd one. Or at least as odd and as acoustic hit can be. I think I've made my opinion on white guys with acoustic guitars abundantly clear at this point. And yeah, Sean Mullins may be the most acoustically white guy yet, but still I can't say this one isn't memorable at least. I ain't so sure about this place. And yet Mullins never really saw the charts again, and that's true of most of the late 90s acoustic guys. But Sean Mullins' lullaby lulled his fans to sleep and I guess they just never woke up again. Well, let's find out what happened after he sang his lullaby. Kind of hurt your voice after a while. Like I said, Sean Mullins was not something I remembered or have ever had much exposure to. In fact, I think my some knowledge of Sean Mullins involved a robot explaining his fears about going to Earth. Now, the Earth's a big and scary place with wars and crime and death. It is? They listen to Sean Mullins and Alanis Morissette. Oh no! This yeah, up until I started writing this episode, I, I somehow believe Sean Mullins was Canadian, I guess because Alanis was Canadian. I think I got that song confused with one of their Canada bashing songs. Whatever. He's not Canadian. He's actually from Georgia. And I don't have a lot of info about his pre-lullaby life, but from what I can tell, this is what his early career was like. Yeah, he was an army guy. Paratrooper. Yeah, this is also true of another wimpy acoustic guitar guy I may cover on this show, but we'll, we'll get to him some other time. Except for the army thing, there's not really a whole lot to the guy's backstory. After he left the army, he toured around the folk circuit. From what I understand, he got a big boost from one of the Indigo Girls, went on tour with them. My dad likes the Indigo Girls, I don't, I don't really know much about them. And he released a bunch of albums in the 90s on his own record label he started, SMG Records. Stands for Sean Mullins Goatee. Sarah Michelle Geller, I don't know. It's a pretty good goatee. Look, there are a bunch of guys like Mullins. Even if they turn out really good, they aren't looking to get rich, and despite my disdain for acoustic guys, there is something to respect about that. Sean Mullins does not strike me as a guy who was looking for the mainstream. The mainstream came to him. Again, remember that this is the time period where Hootie and the Blowfish were one of the biggest bands in history. It was as good a time as any to be a guy without a gimmick playing guitar. His fourth studio album was, you know, just another independent self-release, and some guy in his hometown started playing it on the radio station, and next thing you know, Sean freaking Mullins is one of the biggest names in music. Like I said, we have folk singers. We've always had folk singers. Even in this day and age where people who play actual instruments with their hands and shit are kind of rare, we still have folk singers. You gotta do something kind of special to stand out from all the other folk singers. And Sean Mullins did it by being the folk singer who doesn't sing. She grew up with the children of the stars. See, it's like he's right there, whispering in your ear. Ugh. For some reason, I don't want to be too hard on Sean Mullins. I really don't. I feel a lot less hatred against him than I normally do against most guys like him. Let me look at him with his pretty blonde hair and his sunglasses. I, I should hate him. Especially because there's a lot about this song I just do not like. I think I've mentioned this before, but guys with acoustic guitars really like doing this thing where they write about a poor little girl who's lonely and no one understands her. Ed Sheeran did it, Lil Wayne did it, Train did it, it shows how sensitive you are. That is the well-worn move Sean Mullen pulls here. He even makes the subtext of these songs pretty literal. Mm -hmm. 
Don't worry, little girl, I'll make you feel better with this lullaby. And lullaby is usually a euphemism for my penis, is the way it usually works. And his delivery, it's just, you know, it's very sh showy. In the Hollywood Hills and the Boulevard. It kind of enhances the implied sliminess of it all. Look at me. I'm sensitive and shit. Uh huh. But at the very least, the lonely, misunderstood girl isn't as generic as these songs often can be. We do get a lot of interesting details here. Our subject is a poor little rich girl who grew up in Hollywood and whose parents hung out with celebrities back in the 70s. Her parents threw big parties. Everyone was there. They hung out with folks like Dennis Hopper and Bob Seger and Sonny and Cher. So as you can see, this girl, she had it rough. No one should have a childhood that involves Dennis Hopper. Let's fuck! You just ruined my stadium, man, and it was perfect! Ah! Although I wouldn't have minded hanging out with Sonny and Cher as a kid, and you know, we could go solve mysteries, catch bad guys dressed as monsters. But you know, she's got other reasons to be sad too. And all her friends tell her she's so pretty. She'd be a whole lot prettier if she smiled once in a while. I have learned this from painful, painful experience. Girls don't like it when you tell them to smile. They actually uh, really, really hate it and might threaten to cut you. Look, just don't tell them to smile. Just don't. If you want a girl to smile, a good way to do it is make fun of people who tell them to smile because they, they just don't like it. I'm not sure which Mullins is doing here, but it, it kind of strikes me as a bad move regardless. Even her smile looks like a frown. Well then why are they telling her to smile? I sing to her a lullaby. And as a side note, the kind of girls who get told they need to smile more aren't usually charmed by guys singing literal lullabies to them like they're infants. Rockabye. Jeez. I'm not sure what Mullins and this chick have in common, except for one key thing. They both seem to think Los Angeles blows. Older. I ain't so sure about this place. It's hard to play a gig in this town and keep a straight face. Man, does anyone besides Katy Perry like California? I'm from California, I remember it being nice. Seems like everybody's got a plan. Kind of like Nashville with a tan. Yes, a showbiz town is very similar to another showbiz town. How astute of you to notice. Yeah, I really should hate this song more than I do. I think maybe 90s nostalgia might be getting in the way here, although I'll be still nauseates me, so I, I don't know what it is. The only way I can really contextualize this song is that Sean Mullins is the pre-John Mayer. If John Mayer hasn't covered this song, it's only because doing so would be too obvious. So why, why don't I hate this? Uh, well, it's pleasant, I guess. Maybe it's just a nice melody. Gonna be all right. and, and who doesn't want to be told that everything's gonna be alright? Sean, like this rich girl, I am also sad and lonely, and considerably less rich. Any thoughts? Oh, aw. You make everything better, Sean. I'm sure you played this song for yourself when your career didn't go anywhere after this. Sean Mullins has the classic lament of the one-hit wonder. It's not that his big hit doesn't represent him, but it doesn't represent all of him. There's so much more to Sean Mullins than just a guitar-carrying troubadour whisper speaking over acoustic strumming. But of course, we will not be seeing that here. Now this is his follow-up Shimmer, which did get some radio play, though not a whole lot. Maybe because Alternative Radio already had a song named Shimmer they were playing a lot at the time. Shining eyes are big and blue. Okay, in this case, the follow-up is not about a girl, or not just about a girl, it's also about his kid. Oh, maybe I'm getting sappy as I get older, but I like songs about how parents love their kids. Kids are cute. With Arms Wide Open is my least unfavorite Creed song because of that. Because, you know, who doesn't like little kids? This is not so bad. Oh boy, 
Looks like someone wants to pontificate about the nature of the world and how awful and shocking all the cruelty juxtaposed with all the good blah blah blah. Oh gosh, hating is bad. I'm, I'm sorry, there's nothing in the rest of the song like that. It's just that one line. It's just, oh boy, that was the cheesiest, lamest thing I've ever heard. Oh my god, that was terrible. I just can't get over that. Tell you what, doing this episode, I suddenly remembered, holy crap, I did actually buy a Sean Mullins record once. Yeah, I actually did. How did that happen? Well, you see, there was this guy named Matthew Sweet. I want to love somebody. Now, he was an indie darling back in the 90s, and I loved his work, but he, he kind of hit a slump. So he and Sean Mullins decided to start a band. I can't Yeah, Sweet had all the critical respect, Mullins had the pop success, and, and there was a third guy, Pete Droge. I, I don't know what he brought. But anyway, their band was The Thorns. I bought the album. I loved it. I still love it. And I really wish they made another album. It was like a really good Crosby, Stills, and Nash album. Matter of fact, the label wanted the band to be named Sweet Mullins Droge, which would have been terrible. Sounds like something Superman's editor yells at him, like, Sweet Mullins Droge, Kent, where were you when Zod was attacking Metropolis? Yeah, that was the Thorns, they broke up. And anyway, Mullins is still recording all the time. He released a new album in 2010. I listened to that too. There's a lot of Tom Petty in the guy, obviously. I don't know why I didn't catch that earlier. Also, he spent some time in Nashville, or pasty Los Angeles, as I bet he calls it. He co-wrote a very, very big hit with Zach Brown, the last ugly man in country music. I got my toes in the water, ass in the sand, not a worry in a world of cold beer in my hand, life is good today. I keep looking at Zach Brown and expecting him to make more interesting music than he does. Yeah, I don't think being on a major label ever really agreed with Mullins. He said that at the time he figured, hey, the label is giving me all this money, I should really try and give them a radio hit, and you'd think it would have worked out. He was the kind of guy who would get played all the time on VH1 back when... VH1 wasn't a crappy reality show network, but Mullins never really clicked on a major label. After the next album kind of flopped, Mullins went back to smaller labels on the indie scene. He talks about how weird it was after he got big and he was opening for like Destiny's Child and the Backstreet Boys and stuff, not really his scene. I get the impression he's happier where he is. Uh, maybe I'm not the person to ask. Guy with acoustic guitar, not for me, but Sean Mullins is fine. If you like guys who sound like watered down Tom Petty, Sean Mullins is the guy for you. Which there are definitely worse things to sound like. I mean, I like the wallflowers, so there you go. Hey Sean, I'm completely broken. I haven't paid my taxes in many years, so I'm probably going to jail. Any thoughts? Yeah, I guess that does make me feel better. Oh, I like you, Sean Mullins.